So lamborexant is the, uh, uh, a dual orexin receptor antagonist, so it antagonizes the wake-promoting system that is characterized by orexin, uh, the orexin, it, it, it antagonizes the orexin arousal system and therefore promotes sleep, <clears throat> uh, we think. We think that that's the mechanism. So the two studies, the Sunrise 1 and 2 studies, um, uh, have already been uh, characterized, have already been submitted uh, for, uh, it, have already been submitted for, uh, for consideration for the approval of the drug for commercial use. Uh, the first study involved a short-term, one-month treatment of patients uh, with insomnia, and uh, the comparator was placebo and also zolpidem extended release. And the second study was a six-month study. Uh, I apologize, it's a year-long study with a six-month uh, uh, controlled version, controlled study against placebo, looking at uh, uh, Suvorex in the various doses compared to placebo. So the findings were interesting. Number one, they showed us that um, Suvorexant is helpful in terms of in improving sleep initiation, puts patients to sleep more rapidly, and also in terms of sleep maintenance, it diminishes the awakenings that patients have, and that this effect is not only there for the first month, but seems to persist over the course of six months, and this is a very important finding. Number two, um, it showed us that uh, suborexant um, had a, an interesting effect on sleep architecture or the stages of sleep that we haven't seen before in many other hypnotic drugs, and that is that it seemed to increase the levels of REM sleep and diminish REM latency. Whether or not this has any clinical significance or not is yet something which we need to think about, uh, but uh, it, it does seem to have that uh, effect on REM sleep, which doesn't seem to... Uh, which we haven't seen yet in many of the other hypnotic medications that we've been using. Third, uh, the, the studies uh, had a, uh, were, were per, there, was, there were some safety aspects performed with these studies where patients were awakened in the middle of the night and asked to, uh, after taking, the, after taking a suborexant or after taking Zolpidem or placebo, and were uh, subjected to a body stability test or a body sway test to see if they were able to maintain a steady position. What's interesting about this is that the lower dose of suvorexant or the five milligram dose did not seem to cause impairment in terms of body sway above and beyond placebo or above a certain threshold, I should say. Where, whereas the higher dose of suvorexant, the 10 milligram dose, seemed to just reach threshold criteria for significance in terms of body sway. Whereas zolpidem extended release did cause a great deal of sway and imbalance. This kind of uh, this kind of study is important in that it, uh, elderly uh, wake up a great deal during the course of sleep and walk around. And the attempt, therefore, is to develop medications like this, which may have a, which may have a safety advantage during the course of sleep, while at the same time promoting, promoting sleep and producing proper sleep. The, the other study that was done with Suvorexin was one which is now being mandated by the FDA with many drugs, and that is a driving study. So after taking the medication, individuals are asked to drive the next morning. And the, the, the researchers assess something called SDLP, or Standard Deviation from Lateral Position, or the sway aspect. And interestingly, the drug did not have any significant impairment in terms of sway back and forth, uh, uh, weaving, if you will, back and forth. So there's an increased safety aspect to the medication, it seems, uh, if taken the night before and driving the following morning. So the main difference of this drug from other insomnia therapies is, number one, mechanism of action, of course. It's the second dual, rece dual orexin receptor agonist, whereas most of the other drugs are either benzodiazepine um, a GABA receptor agonists or work at the histamine and, um, norep and uh, uh, arou other arousal systems. That's number one. Number two, it seems to have, although not directly compared to uh, all these other drugs, but it seems to have a safety profile which is uh, superior in some ways in that after awakening during the course of sleep, patients don't seem to have as much motor impairment as the comparator used in this particular study, which was Zolpidem. Um, number three, it is, it is likely, uh, if, it, if it is indicated for, any, for anything, which hopefully will be, it's likely going to be indicated for sleep initiation and maintenance insomnia because that's where the data seem to be pointing towards, so.